and we are watching all the reaction rolling in after the stunning first face-off between President Biden and former President Trump. We're also getting our first look at the candidates after the CNN presidential debate. You can see here backstage, Donald Trump did get a rousing applause from his team. Most analysts and a CNN flash poll showed Trump as the night's clear winner. And then President Biden visited a Waffle House in Atlanta, which hosted a debate watch party. Some of the headlines this morning, though, show Democrats alarmed with increasing calls to replace him. This morning, the headline, in Politico states, Democrats considered the unthinkable it's time for Biden to go. And here's the Washington Post this morning. Democrats panic over Biden's debate performance, doubt his future. National Desk's Matt Galka is in Atlanta with the debate's big moments. But let's get right to Mark Boyle at the live desk with the reaction pouring in. This debate, obviously, as we know, Mark, could reshape the presidential race. It appears that is exactly what's going to happen. Everyone's talking about it. The reaction continues to come in this morning, Jan. The overwhelming consensus from the CNN presidential debate from both sides. Former President Trump steamrolled President Biden at every turn. And at many times, Biden appeared confused and lost his train of thought. And that's making many Democrats this morning uneasy and giving Republicans Republicans' firepower. It was a slow start. That's obvious to everyone. I'm not going to debate that point. I'm talking it about the choice in November. I'm talking about one of the most important elections in our collective lifetime. The reality is, I mean, the discussion beforehand is, were they going to drug him up? I think they gave him a lobotomy instead. And as an American, just take the, take the actual Republican-Democrat nature out of this. This is frightening. As a citizen of the United States of America, this is the man responsible for defending our homeland when we're facing the greatest national security threats we faced in our history. That's downright frightening regardless of the debate. More post-debate fallout for the president. According to a CNN flash poll, these are the numbers we want you to look at this morning. Only 33% of registered voters said President Biden produced a better performance. Compare that to the 67% who said former President Trump did in that debate. Looking ahead now to what's next and uh, the next debate scheduled for September 10th, hosted by ABC. Now both candidates are getting back on the campaign trail already today with Biden holding an event in Raleigh, North Carolina, Trump in Virginia. More reaction to last night's debate and what's next for both candidates throughout the morning for you right here at the live desk. And as always, you can check for the very latest online anytime at the nationaldesk.com. Mark, thank you. The debate could have also shifted which candidate voters who were on the fence will pick in November. Renowned pollster Frank Luntz said, My focus group of undecided voters wants Joe Biden to step aside. They like him and respect him. Most voted for him in 2020, but they want him to go. Tonight was a political earthquake. Our coverage continues now with the National Desk's Matt Galka reporting from Atlanta with a look at the most memorable moments from the debate. It was a shaky start, but then they didn't hold back. Donald Trump and Joe Biden locking up in a historic debate rematch with a potential second term in the White House on the line. There were plenty of issues to talk about. The candidates were hit with a question about inflation to start. We got to take a look at what I was left when I became president and what Mr. Trump left me. We had an economy that was in free fall. The pandemic was so badly handled. Many people were dying. All he said was, it's not that serious. Just inject a little bleach into your arm. You'll be all right. The economy collapsed. There were no jobs. Unemployment rate rose to 15 percent. He also said he inherited 9 percent inflation. No, he inherited almost no inflation, and it stayed that way for 14 months. And then it blew up under his leadership because they spent money like a bunch of people that didn't know what they were doing, and they don't know what they were doing. The two also trading jabs over the border crisis. Because of his ridiculous, insane, and very stupid policies, People are coming in and they're killing our citizens at a level that we've never seen. We call it migrant crime. I call it Biden migrant crime. When he was president, he was taking, separating babies from their mothers, putting them in cages, making sure they were, the families were separated. Then it was abortion, with Donald Trump taking credit for the Supreme Court justices who overturned Roe versus Wade. The Supreme Court just approved the abortion bill, and I agree with their decision to have done that, and I will not block it. Every legal scholar throughout the world, the most respected, wanted it brought back to the states. I did that. Now the states are working it out. The idea that states are able to do this is a little like saying we're going to turn civil rights back to the states. Let each state have a different rule. Climate change, COVID, and felony convictions for Donald Trump and President Joe Biden's son all became verbal punches thrown by the two candidates.
And it was an incredibly shaky start for the president. Social media was lighting up about the first 20 minutes or so of his performance. And CNN is now reporting that Democrats are now starting to panic about it. It remains to be seen if it ends up backfiring on Joe Biden, agreeing to take this debate in June as we head into the November election. Reporting in Atlanta, I'm Matt Gelk. And some furious lawmakers and voters also checked President Biden for his false claim that no U.S. troops died during his administration. I'm the only president this century that doesn't have any, this, this decade, that doesn't have any troops dying anywhere in the world like he did. Afghanistan, where we left billions of dollars of equipment behind, we lost 13 beautiful soldiers and 38 soldiers were obliterated. Texas Congressman Dan Crenshaw wrote 10 minutes into the debate and Biden has already apparently forgotten that 13 service members died in Afghanistan for one reason only, his orders to hastily withdraw without a plan. Florida Congressman Byron Donalds wrote, unlike Joe Biden, the American people will never forget the 13 brave American heroes who died due to his disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. And then he, you can see right here he listed their names. In January, three U.S. troops were killed in a Shiite terror attack also when a drone struck a U.S. base in Jordan. The Border Patrol Union also called out President Biden for claiming that they endorsed him for president. The union quickly posted, quote, to be clear, we never have and never will endorse Biden. The border crisis, a hot topic with former President Trump calling out the rise in high profile crimes involving illegal migrants who entered the country during the administration. People are coming in and they're killing our citizens at a level that we've never seen. We call it migrant crime. These three incredible young girls over the last few days, one of them, I just spoke to the mother and they just had the funeral for this girl, 12 years old. Two illegal Venezuelan migrants are arrested for the murder of 12-year-old Jocelyn Nungary. They face capital murder charges and are each being held on $10 million bond. Yesterday, hundreds of loved ones and friends did pack a Houston funeral home to say goodbye to Jocelyn. Several family members called for the borders to be closed and demanded justice for her. First and foremost, I just wanted say I love you Jossie and we will see you again I promise and we will get them and they will get what they deserve there were so many heart-wrenching moments during the funeral uh, including one with Jocelyn's mother as she approached the casket and placed some white roses on it preparing to say goodbye to her daughter and you can see her there in New York an illegal migrant stands accused of killing a woman and dumping her body in a park 21 year old John Shagaguse Ilvis pleaded not guilty in court yesterday. Authorities say the Ecuadorian national strangled Jocelyn Toakiza to death just days before her 21st birthday and left her body in a park in Syracuse. Shagaguse Ilvis illegally entered the U.S. last year. An illegal migrant also charged with raping a girl in a separate case in New York. 21-year-old Sakir Akan faces first-degree rape charges. New York authorities say the Turkish national raped a 15-year-old girl last month. He illegally entered the U.S. last year and was released into the country under President Biden's border policies. And we now know the suspect arrested in the murder of two people in a Chick-fil-A is an illegal migrant. Outside Dallas, Texas, serving police say 37-year-old Mendoza Argueta shot the two victims at a restaurant Wednesday. He illegally entered the U.S. from El Salvador. And this morning, headlines across the country reflecting concerns from Democrats about President Biden's chances of re-election after the debate with former President Trump. A headline from the Wall Street Journal stating this morning, Biden crashes against Trump. The story goes on to say, quote, the president appeared unsteady, the sort of showing Democrats feared the incumbent would deliver. At the same time, Biden's performance last night causing a firestorm online with the hashtag swap out Joe going viral. Former 2020 Democratic presidential candidate Andrew Yang posted that the Democratic National Committee should choose another nominee. Mark Boyle is at the live desk following the takeaways from the debate and all the reactions still pouring in right now. Good morning to you, Mark. 
Reaction continues. Good morning to you, Jan. I was just looking at Twitter X, and that's all that I see right now. Reaction and thoughts about how this debate went. The overwhelming consensus from the CNN presidential debate from both sides. Former President Trump steamrolled President Biden at every turn. And at many times, Biden appeared confused, lost his train of thought, something that seems to be making many Democrats really uneasy this morning and giving Republicans firepower. House Speaker Mike Johnson posting this statement on social media overnight, saying in part, quote, an objective truth that can't be denied. Only one of the men on the stage tonight is qualified and capable of being elected president in 2024. This is the biggest mismatch in the history of presidential debates. Meanwhile, some Democrats rallying to the president's defense. We've all had those nights. All of us, not one person watching, hasn't had those nights. Well, we've up? not all been in presidential debates. It? But it's not about debates. Uh, you have good moments, you have bad moments. You wake up the next day, you dust it off, and you move forward. And some people are talking about Newsom being the next candidate, perhaps. In a post-CNN flash poll, roughly 81% say the registered voters that watched the debate say it had no effect on their choice for president. Only 14% that it made them reconsider and didn't change their mind. While 5% said it did change their minds. Now looking ahead to the next debate scheduled for September 10th, that's hosted by ABC. Now both candidates right back on the campaign trail today. Biden holding an event in Raleigh, North Carolina. Trump is in Virginia. We are continuing to follow the latest reaction for you throughout the morning right here on the live desk and always you can check out the very latest online anytime at the nationaldesk.com. Mark, thank you. A majority of voters also feel like Trump did better than Biden last night. The CNN flash poll shows only 33 percent of registered voters said President Biden produced a better performance. That's compared to 67 percent who said Trump did. A key moment of last night's debate was Trump's response to one of Biden's campaign strategies. For months, Biden has said Trump as a quote, threat to democracy because of January 6th. On January 6th, we had a great border. Nobody coming through, very few. On January 6th, we were energy independent. On January 6th, we had the lowest taxes ever. We had the lowest regulations ever. On January 6th, we were respected all over the world. All over the world, we were respected. And then he comes in and we're now left at. We're like a bunch of stupid people. Trump also blasted Biden after he called Trump a convicted felon, pointing out Biden's son Hunter also is a convicted felon, still facing other charges. Hunter is waiting to be sentenced on his felony gun convictions and will face another trial in September on felony tax charges. Progressive independent candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who has struggled to get on ballots, did not meet the qualifications for the presidential debate and held his own event last night. I think almost... Everything that President Biden said, I know to be not to be true, including the, his claim that he was endorsed by the Border Patrol. The, you know, the border, there's been at least 7 million people who've come across the border, and they've come across principally, and this is without the gotaways, which are another 2 million. Yesterday, the state of North Carolina denied RFK access to their ballot in November. So far, he's only qualified in five states. 